Hey guys, Aggie here, and I am here with Grievance Gaming and the members of Apotheosis Inc. And we are going to have our first look at Rido in its alpha version. I am here with CEO of Apotheosis Inc., Victor, and this is going to be quite the hey exciting guys, day Aggie today. Here, and I'm... Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Rido, this is so exciting. Anything you want to say before I get started, Victor? Uh, just that this is a, an alpha build of Rido, and uh, we're very excited to show it, but this is a little funny uh, detail is that since we gave you this version, mm -hmm. there are already three more have just rolled out from the programming team. Yeah. <laughs> Programmers <laughs> unite programming power. So that's awesome. They're definitely hard at work at this then. Oh, so exciting. So what you can see here on the main menu is going to be our, this is going to be our landing page. Uh, the, of course, everything you see here is subject to change, it being an alpha. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the deck option is where you will go to build your own custom decks, and there will be a sort of a test bed option in there to test them out. Mm -hmm. uh, the shop is going to be what it sounds like. It's for our microtransaction uh, support there. Uh, very, and there will be you go, there'll be notifications when there's a sale on, or if there's new f things added to it. It's also where you're going to get the cosmetic items, like spice up your game experience. Ooh, and if cosmetics. you want to go ahead and hit play, uh, we'll go to the play menu. All right. All right, and as you can see here, we've got. Uh, I'm going to be sort of going along on my computer as well, so I can keep track. We've got the tutorial mode, which uh, it uh, it's it'll teach you the basics of the game. Mm -hmm. So if you want if if you want to kick that off, you can, or you can go straight into versus uh, verse the AI, and I can explain how the game goes. It's up to you. Um, why don't we kick off tutor with tut tutorial mode, and you can also explain as we go for our lovely viewers. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. All right, so let's see. Um, I'll read what the screen says real quick. Welcome to Rido. This is the game board where you fight with the power of the gods. The goal of the game is to capture the most cells on the board, and the game is over when the game board is filled. Tap to continue. Oh, I probably shouldn't read the tap to continue. Yeah, this uh, we, we, we right now, when the game goes into beta and then mm -hmm. goes live, there'll be a contextual queue that you won't have to worry about where the game will take, are you on a PC, are you on a Mac, or are you a devi device that uses touch, and so it'll swap that out. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really cool about uh, this tutorial is this tutorial uh, was the result of Raphael, our lead programmer, mm -hmm. Renee, who, uh, our, uh, market our lead marketer and graphic designer, and David, our game director. They all came together to make this tutorial. Awesome. All right, so up in the right corner here, this is your score. You get you get it by controlling cards on the board. This is your deck. Your deck contains all of your cards. This is the deck counter. It tells you how many cards are left in your deck. Decks will always start with 30 cards. Oh, okay, so 30 is the starting number? Yeah, uh, it's always 30. Okay. This is your first hand, comprised of four cards drawn from your deck. Your hand can have up to six cards in it. Those, that artwork is so pretty. I'm, I love your artists. You can draw more cards by tapping on the deck. You can only draw once per turn this way. Drawing a card costs a leaf. I love that you decided to call it leaves. That's pretty sweet. Oh, I'm getting all flustered and excited. This is your leaf counter. You can use leaves to draw cards from your deck and play cards from your hand to the board. Oh, it just threw a bunch of errors. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was testing it before a little, um, and it I just closed it and it was able to keep going. I was supposed to uh, take yeah, that card right there you just mm -hmm. moused over. So it was supposed to move over. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the joys of Alpha. <laughs> Worked. The first one we sent you at work, the second one it didn't at all, the third one we sent you at work, and now it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Now, now you're, I hope the programmers are watching. <laughs> oh, they'll get it later. <laughs> <I bet they will>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and if you guys hear the third voice, Renee is also here with us for marketing. So everybody make sure they say hi to Renee. That's a lovely Renee. <laughs> You can rotate the card clockwise or counterclockwise by tapping here. 
Uh, my programmers know I love them. <laughs> uh, choose a cell on the game board to play this card. You may need to rotate the card in order for it to fit. Double tap the chosen cell to play the card. Ooh, there's a sound effect. It sounded kind of like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> a turn ends whenever you run out of leaves. A card ability ends the turn. Tap to continue. Oh, I need to stop writing tap to continue. You can also choose to end the turn anytime you wish. Now end your turn. Blue cards are controlled by you. Red cards are controlled by the opponent. I kind of like also how it showed up, like, all the, what my opponent did and everything on the right side. Yeah, the, uh, the the alert system is something the programmers are pretty uh, proud of because it's uh, it's a very difficult for thing, them to build across <laughs> multiple platforms with all the different resolutions. Oh, that's pretty cool then. Good job on them. Learn something new. <laughs> oh, and to our viewers right now, if there's anything, any questions you have, feel free to ask. I'll be sure to bring them up. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. Blue card. And, uh, Ooh, sorry. I'm... I'll try and answer any two that I see, but uh, I keep getting kicked off the Twitch chat, so. Aw, I'm not sure why. I'm sorry. No, I think it's because I haven't verified my email yet. <laughs> Blue cards are controlled by... Oh, I already read that. Next. Click on your deck to draw a card. This will cost one leaf. Now let's try capturing a card. Tap to continue. Another little error thing. <laughs> Remember, guys, Alpha... Card strength is determined. Oops, I accidentally clicked something too quick. The card forgot to move again. Uh, but I know it said card strength is determined by the numbers on the corner of the cards. To capture a card, the strength of your card's side must exceed that of your target's boarding side. Go ahead and rotate this card. Well, there's no card there right now. Ooh. I think it. Not draw. Well, that at least that worked. Hmm. Hmm. I might need to restart it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, let me get with a Zolster who's in chat. Mm -hmm. Zolster says, "Click the top card in the hand again." <laughs> sorry about this to all the viewers. I think they're just happy to finally see some gameplay. If they've been excited yeah. about this game is me. Azulster just told me on our internal uh, chat that that issue's already been fixed in the next three builds he rolled out. <laughs> <laughs> He's on top of this. All right, I'll try restarting the tutorial real quick. Let's see. Well, maybe you can just go ahead and play. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't work this time, I'll go ahead. Um... I'm almost to the point I was at. Yeah, it looks like that part doesn't want to work. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, play an actual game. Once again, I'm sorry uh, that this uh, alpha build is bugging out to all your viewers. This is all going to, a lot of these issues are being taken care of as, right now as we speak by the programming team. Well, oh, okay. you know, that's kind of. The point is, you know, we're the idea behind Apotheosis is that we're gamers first and we really want you guys to see every process. And, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe it kind of stinks to kind of show you guys something that's buggy, but at the same time, you're going to get to see it when it's great, too. Mm -hmm. I also like to think that it's not as bad as it was in World of Warcraft first launches. I remember my flying horse fondly. <laughs> Your flying horse? <laughs> Fun. All right, so I went ahead and did the AI version of the game. All um, right. Let's see. Um, I think I'll play this card since it's nice and cheap. Female warrior played. <laughs> uh, and now, since you still have a leaf, uh, the mm -hmm. you can if you had, let's say, a, a card that cost two leaf, mm -hmm. you could play it again. But since you don't, the game is waiting for you to manually end your turn. Oh, okay. That's cool that you can play multiple cards then. Mm-hmm. So there the opponent played a card. Looks like this is the only card I can afford right now. 
you don't always have to play a card. One of the very viable tactics is to actually skip your turn, let yourself build up leaf, because you do gain three leaf every turn. Mm -hmm. And if you notice that card that has nine there, that's currently one of the most powerful and rarer cards in the game, because it's very interesting to use, because as you can see, on one side it's got a strength of 26, uh, on two sides it's got a strength of 26, but on one side it's only got a strength of two. So you got to be very careful in how you play it. 25, 1, and 1, it says on my screen. Yep. Okay. So, um, like, when you... Because the way that uh, strength of a card is put together mm -hmm. is by adding the two corners together on one side. So, if you inspected that card, for example, when it came to the inspector side, the upper flat edge would have a strength of 20, 26. The <laughs> lower edge facing the, facing the right would also have a strength of 26, but then... The left one would only have a strength of two. Ooh. So that's one of the are personally that's one of my favorite cards in the game because it really makes you think how to use it because it's it greatly it's like good to boom I need to capture this now, but if you use it too quickly, it's very hard to ever take back. Yeah, I could see that. Oof, that's rough. Um, I actually think I'm going to draw, and end my turn. Okay. Looks like a he played like some kind of mon sea monster. <laughs> yep. Mm. The ravenous kraken. Uh, the alert system that you guys are seeing that's going to uh, tell every tell you what was played and how it was played. Mm -hmm. And uh, different uh, card abilities will do different things. Yeah, I captured a card. <laughs> Um, and abilities aren't in yet, right? Excuse me? Abilities aren't available yet? Uh, not all abilities are available yet, but I think we're rolling, they're gonna be ro those are going to ro get rolled out probably either sometime this evening or tomorrow morning by the programming team, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I know the abilities that are, uh, I believe in this build, Azulster will correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is there's in the ability that for, cause certain cards have a lower leaf cost, than they should, and that's because they have the ability that automatically ends your turn right there. Sort of oh. a trade-off, like, hey, you can play this more powerful card, but that's all you're going to be able to do. Uh, and then there's another ability that when you play the card, it uh, reshuffles your hand and into the deck and then draws you a new hand. Oh, wow, that's crazy. That's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, so will there be, like, an in-game guide or something at the time to tell us what does what ability, or is that still coming, too? Uh, no, there will be. Uh, when you click on a card and it goes over to the inspection side of the screen, mm -hmm. uh, and it goes over to the inspection side of the screen, the, there will be a scroll that will pop up, and which will explain the, uh, various abilities that each card has. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see the scroll. Okay. That's pretty cool. And does the little triangle in the bottom corner of the picture going to do something, or...? Uh, that little symbol indicates the card does... Uh, the, the indicates the card will have an ability. Not mm -hmm. all... And that symbol will actually change depending mm -hmm. on the ability. Oh, that's pretty cool, then. Okay, um... Let's see. I'm against an 8 and a 7 right now. Hmm. Ooh. An average game of Rido is supposed to take anywhere from uh, 10 to uh, 15 uh, minutes. We have plenty of time here. And you can keep talking about the game if you want. Or I know you guys are going to be starting your Kickstarter soon, right? Uh, our Kickstarter is going to be going live the 29th. Yay! Uh, we've got uh, we're finalizing. We've 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 all we've we're we're getting close to finalizing everything right now, which is mostly making a bunch of phone calls and uh, meetings. But uh, mm -hmm. one thing that we're really pushing, which goes big hats out to the programming team because they're pulling a lot of all-nighters. Uh, is they're, uh, they're going to, by the time we go to Kickstarter, 
this, what you're playing, will be very different because it will be at beta stage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the bugs that were here, they're going to be stomped out, and we're actually going to be having an in-game reporting option for feedback at that time. That's good to hear. I was actually just about to ask about that. <laughs> The, uh, one of the other nice things that we're going to be rolling out is anyone who has gone to our website and signed up for the, uh, for the beta, they're going to get in because the beta is going to be dropping, I believe, either the same day as the Kickstarter launches or within a few days thereof. So if you're on the list before we go live, you're going to get in. Nice. And then after that, anyone who backs us, no matter what level, will get into the beta as well. Yes, there you go, guys. <laughs> That's exciting. Ooh, is this... Yeah, one of... Sorry, is this an ability or a glitch that his numbers didn't show up? Uh, that's a, that is a, that is a Zolster's mortal nemesis. Uh, Azulster uh, is in the chat. He's, his name, his, he's Raphael. He's our lead programmer, and that is his mortal enemy. That glitch. <laughs> Aw, poor Raphael. He'll I get have it eventually. Seen him quite literally, sit down and rebuild the whole game line by line, trying to find it. Wow. He'll get it. He sounds like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> So sorry, sorry, I cut you off again earlier. You, uh, I think you were talking about the Kickstarter. So. <laughs> oh no, not at all. Uh, the uh, the Kickstarter is uh, we've set we 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 did a lot of when it comes to details on the Kickstarter. We're still like I said, we're still working on it all. Nice thing about the, having uh, an amazing marketing team with Renee and with Ashley is that they're constantly uh, adjusting our view on crowdfunding because the, the environment changes. Like we had a meeting the other day where uh, Ashley and Renee both pointed out that all the research they did two months ago is completely different than the environment on Kickstarter right now. So we had to adjust, we, so, we, so we adjusted in real time. That's awesome. Sounds like they're doing great then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Victor, they don't care about that. <laughs> I, I think you guys deserve credit for that. <laughs> I well, agree with thank them. you. <laughs> uh, the, one of some of the other things that we're going to be uh, adding to uh, Rido between now and the beta is a uh, more robust... Uh, inspection mode because right now the only way in the alpha the inspector works is when you pick up the card mm -hmm. but on a mobile device if you don't know all the cards you can imagine how uh, difficult that would be to sort of have to remember everything so one of the features we will have uh, by then is the double tapping on a card that's already played mm -hmm. to uh, inspect the uh, opponent what the opponent has played or even inspect one of the cards that you have played Okay, that's cool. So yeah, it'll do nothing right. Oh yeah, it just lets makes it look like I'm selecting the the triangle. Okay. Darn. Oh no, it's his mortal enemy. <laughs> yep, and the thing, what makes that bug so entertaining for the programmers to track down is uh, it's not always the, it can't be duplicated reliably. <laughs> <laughs> But they have, uh, I know that they've got some ideas, so I'm confident they'll have it fixed. But just going to one of our whole things, like Renee said, we are gamers first, and uh, I think it's a disservice to be dishonest uh, about what we're working on and what we, uh, and what we intend to do. So that's why I'm, I'm okay admitting that that's a bug and we are on it, because we know about it. We're not going to be one of those companies that uh, there's a bug and people are reporting the bug and we're going to stick our heads in the ground. <laughs> we're going to do our <laughs> we're, not only are we going to fix it when we find it or or let known about it, we're going to let everyone know the progress on it. That's awesome, and I bet everybody will appreciate that too. Let's see. Um, so right now, as everyone can see, the AI version is just what's available. Um, and it's, it's pretty good. The AI has actually captured stuff and everything, so 
super kudos on the programmers. Um, any ideas when or with maybe with the release of beta or when we're going to start seeing some um, player versus player capability? Uh, right now, we uh, internally, we do have a player versus player build. Okay. It, uh, it only works on mobile, and uh, full disclosure, the reason that is because for the, mo for the best experience for our players, we're using Google Play Services, which is an all-in-one uh, bundle to handle multiplayer and that works on iOS, and it works on Android. Uh, it doesn't, however, work on PC at this time. So when the beta goes live, uh, the, we are going to uh, try and have a workaround available to allow people to play uh, multiplayer on PC. But we're also going to go live on our Kickstarter with a Steam Greenlight. Because Steam's uh, multiplayer protocol is very similar in purpose to Google Play services. Mm -hmm. And that is going to allow us to have multiplayer so, uh, on the PC. So uh, given the fact that the Steam Greenlight process is shorter than our Kickstarter campaign is going to be, Mm -hmm. Depending on that, you might see full-fledged PC multiplayer in the beta before the Kickstarter is even done. Yeah, you guys hear that? Donate! <laughs> and vote on Greenlight when we go live there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, darn. Ooh, everything okay? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure because you just shuffled for a second. Oh, the uh, the camera. Uh, apparently, my camera decided to go look somewhere else, so I just moved into its uh, view. Oh, that's strange. I'm so sorry about that. I can fix that just a second if you want to sit back where you were. No, it's okay. You sure? Yeah, I'm back in camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I got sorry. a big old desk. <laughs> the uh, game feed was probably just being funny then. Sorry about that. Thank you for shifting. All right, let's see. Um, there's not many choices for me at the moment. Um, any build, ab future abilities you can take take us about? Tell us about? Take us about? Uh, yeah, uh, there is going to be uh, certain abilities such as uh, you play a card. Once it's on the field, you can tap it and have it capture another card or mm -hmm. perhaps uncapture a card that has already been captured. We will have cards that you can tap them. They can shift their position. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we also have cards that when they're captured, instead of being captured, they move. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of shenanigans planned. Woohoo! Shenanigans are always awesome. Like I know there's one card planned. Uh, I forget. I think it's Tear, but I could be wrong. But when Tear's ability is mm -hmm. fully implemented, you'll play him and he will attempt to fill all the cells around him with uh, little soldier guys that he spawns. Because the strategy, I think, behind him is just complete area denial. Oh, area, area denial is always fun. I know a lot of people probably have fun with that. Well, that's one of the main aspects of Rido is you are trying, you are competing with the AI mm. to uh, to capture territory. And as you can see, you're, you're knocking the pants off our AI right now. Yeah. Eat it, computer. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> how's our how's our feed on Twitch looking, Renee? Oops. It's awesome. awesome. Everybody seems to like it. Wonderful. I'm glad that means a lot to us. I mean, uh, if there are any new people uh, watching, uh, we are a new company. We are just getting started here in uh, um, Austin, Texas, but our team is global. Uh, we've got members on almost every continent, and we've all been uh, working really hard to bring Rido to the public and to make it a game that people want to play and that people have fun playing. I win. <laughs> just tap. If you, touch, if you click uh, on the screen, I was say tap. If you click the screen, it should take you back to the main menu. Uh, one of the things we're hoping to deploy there on the uh, you won screen after you've clicked it is a sort of a statistics page that says like how many cards you played versus how many they played, average strength, so on and so forth. <laughs> I 
Yeah. I'm not sure if that'll make it into the first build of the beta, as we want the game to have be uh, fun to play and playable first. But it is on the it is on our roadmap. Doesn't look like it's taking me back to the main menu. <laughs> Raph. <laughs> yeah, it looks like nothing's happening, so I'm gonna have to close it out real quick, and I'll play one more. But this is exciting. I'm having fun. I'm really liking this. It makes me think. It makes me do math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? What? Do you, how do you feel about it? So this is the first one that you played? Mm-hmm. So oh, we, uh, we, pro we, uh, this is the first time anyone outside of uh, Apotheosis or people who are directly around us mm -hmm. uh, have been playing, have seen Rido in action. I feel so special and awesome. <laughs> you should, NZ. Oh, of course. And I'm so happy you guys gave me this opportunity and Grievance's opportunity. And I bet everybody's thrilled to be seeing this right now. Oh, it's the enemy. <laughs> um, but while I'm playing this, you guys are free to talk about whatever you want. Pitch. Uh, why? I'd be happy. You know, we'll be happy to take any questions uh, from uh, the Twitch stream uh, about the game. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't see the Twitch chat uh, con uh, consistently, so Renee will probably, or you will have to relay the questions to me. So while you're playing, okay. maybe if Renee does it. Okay, I can. Uh, I can tell you one question. Geeky Breesta asked. Uh, from what we see now, what will the Kickstarter help with as far as game development and content? Uh, the Kickstarter is the, the primary, the Kickstarter funds will go directly to helping us support Rido on back end. Like some of these bugs uh, that you are seeing will be solved immediately by the application of, uh, there's some very expensive middleware that uh, will help us with the internal error checking. It'll help with the cross-content platforming almost, uh, I mean, cross-platform content almost exclusively because uh, that's going to require us to, to uh, build our own uh, infrastructure. And while we started on that, we, uh, are, we, we'll need uh, the funding for that part. It's going to help us get this game out to multiple platforms uh, because uh, if you... Are from, if those of you who aren't familiar with Unity Technologies, the amazing company that makes our game engine, Unity, uh, the way their pricing structure is is that our, we have to license the technology for different platforms. And that, that is, a, that is a, a sizable cost. It's very fair what they do, but it's still sizable. So that's where a lot of the Kickstarter's funding is going to be getting us onto every platform available that we can. And uh, on the other side, um, besides besides what this does for the game itself, it actually just keeps us making the game. We uh, yes, we have one, a person on every continent, but there's only about 14 of us, and a lot of us are in school. Uh, I know TJ mentioned he would really like to be out of class so that way he can work more on Rido earlier, and you know a lot of it is actually just supporting us so that way we can get the best game possible and but not not all i mean when you guys see the kickstarter you will see s probably more different uh stretch goals than any other kickstarter that's out there and we really have a really good plan for not just how we're going to roll this game out but how we're going to roll out the lore of it and really give our fans a chance to sink their teeth into the story that we're presenting uh, that's a very good point, Renee. One of the uh, things that I'm pleased to announce here is that Rido, a lot of, uh, Rido is not a game that we are going to be putting out there on crowdfunding and saying, here's the game. If it gets funded, here's the game, and then we're going to go do something else. No, no matter what happens, as long, like Eric said, as long as there is interest in the game and we can keep the lights on the server on, I mean, Eric wanted a roof over his head. I'm not that picky. I, I'm a sailor by trade, so the roof is optional. Uh, so uh, as long as we can keep the server running, uh, we were, are going to have an expansion plan. And the, that plan is, at this point, it's very tentative, so this could change, as everything in early game development can. But our hope is to roll out expansions with new cards 
every at least once a quarter and then once a year do a new release which would be a new group of cards which would introduce new mechanics with new themes that might act with that will expand outside of Norse sense. mythology so cool what kind yeah, of mythology sorry what kind of mythologies are you going for uh, right now we uh, we're focusing on Norse because the uh, the because no matter what, the first release is going to be Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the next three expansions thereafter are also going to be in the Norse myth mythos. But I know that for the next release, we're looking at several, different, several other mythologies. But we're trying to avoid going directly into the more well-known ones, like right off the bat. So I, don't, I, I know the design team and David, our game director, have been discussing it. I know there's several. I know that we have plans to move into the Egyptian pantheon. We have plans to move into the Olympian pantheon. We have we have plans, I believe, for even the uh, the Twatha de Donan. That's I believe that, that's that's very that's Celtic. Cool. Uh, and but the, as to where they're going to fall. That is still up in the air because Rido will have a story mode, and with every release will come new chapters to the story, and it's all going to connect to, to, together. And so that's the purview of the design team, and they haven't ironed that out yet because they want it to be the best as possible. Awesome. Thank you. I think... Geeky just asked a question, too. He wants to know, um, are there plans for different designs for game boards as far as art? Uh, yes, and uh, I, as I am pleased to uh, say that uh, uh, we are, we, because uh, Grievance has been so good to us and supporting us here at the beginning at Apotheosis, we're actually going to be uh, giving Grievance their own game board that will be available to all members of the Grievance family. <laughs> uh, awesome. But uh, but yes, uh, the 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 game will be very customizable cosmetically. Uh, there's going to be roll uh, a lot of the uh, microtransaction stuff is going to be rolled out uh, as the beta gets to its end, and because the game, the game's release date, not the Kickstarter or the beta, but we want to have the game out by Q4 of this year. Uh, but uh, the you'll be able to customize. The card backs, you'll be able to customize the environment, like that table that the board is on. You'll be able to customize the board itself. Uh, be able to swap it out. Uh, and one of the things is, is eventually when that goes live, those items are going to be purchased through in-game currency, which is called silver, which is short for hack silver, which is actually the currency the Vikings used. Ooh. Uh, we are committed to making the game for gamers. So cosmetic items are always going to be, as much as we can, to the best of our ability, will always be priced below actual gameplay items. That's so awesome. You guys are doing so many great things for the gamers. It's so admirable and nice to hear. Uh, to mention something, again, that's going to be put in at some point along the beta. I'd have to check the beta timeline. Uh, we've recently partnered with a uh, another small indie studio because it's very important for indie companies to support each other called Sonic Bloom Games. I highly encourage you to go check them out uh, because they are putting out an amazing piece of middleware that we're going to use to enhance the uh, ambiance of Rido called Choreographer. Uh, and hmm. Choreographer is software that allows us to dictate in-game events off hmm. of sound effects. So one of the things currently on the pipeline is to have, whenever you make a very successful play, to have a sound effect go off and then generate the, uh, the ambient effects around you on the board based on the sound. That's different. That's really different. That's actually taken me a minute to wrap my head around. Well, I believe one of the, fe the features <laughs> that Azulster wants to implement to, mm -hmm. to clarify it is uh, when a card is played that results in a multiple capture because the theme of Rido is you're playing this in like a tavern, mm -hmm. is uh, 
he want he wants a st- the sound of a stein to slam down <laughs> and uh, it'll cause the uh, the board to sort of shake for a moment but that shake will be dynamic based on the sound oh that's so cool okay I get it now that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it's we're really excited to work with the technology because while that's been done in games before it has to be put together manually so it's very painstaking and there's always this unless it's done incredibly well there's always this sort of sense of the almost audit almost like the uncanny valley only with your the because there's a disconnect between what your eyes are seeing and what your ears are hearing mm-hmm. using choreographer to cue those events it becomes natural hmm that would that is so cool and um do you have do you guys have like an estimated timeline when that'll be available at all or is it still like in the works completely? Oh the the uh, the choreographer based effects? Mhm. Uh those are in the beta timeline. I'm not sure where in the beta they are, but uh they 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 will be in there before launch. One of the things hmm. that we are going to be doing is when we we say the game will be ready in Q4 of this year. The reason we're saying Q4 is there's a lot of game companies that will say, all right, our game is going to be put out this at this point, mm-hmm. and then they'll delay it, and then they'll delay it again mm-hmm. because something came up, and that is a reality of game development that can't happen. We are doing our best to avoid that, and one of the ways we're doing that is by saying our release date is Q4, uh, 2015 this year because that gives us time and it gives us a little bit of wiggle room. If we we get going well, we can release it earlier in that window. If we need the extra time, we have it available. Uh, One of the things we hope, and this comes from every member of the team, is that is going to be our window. And because we're gamers too. We all play video games. We don't like being said, oh yeah, the game's coming out next week. Go to the Go to, go to Steam, go to the store. Uh, oh, wait, it's been delayed. Oh, <laughs> no. I hate we're, that. We're, 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 we're doing our best to avoid that. We, and because of that, we have a very realistic back end. Mo- mostly because we want to play it. <laughs> uh, full disclosure, I can't beat the game's AI. I lose all the time. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just beat it twice. I know. I mean, I, I noticed that. I, I think uh, I think I need to practice either that or a Zolster's playing a prank on me and, like, turning the AI on super hard mode when I play. <laughs> I bet he is. I bet he is. <laughs> Best troll ever. Troll your boss. <laughs> oh, well, I shouldn't say boss. You guys always talk about how you're all a team and everything. Sorry. Troll your CEO. <laughs> We are a team, and, it, and that, I think, really helps us go far and, and get us where we need to go. Mm-hmm. And, and it, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's like it, the, the team, we see the team that builds Rido, and we see what goes beyond it with the community. And so we have a lot of other things planned, too, like uh, events that we're going to go off. They're, gonna, they're, they're planned for the future. Events are going to be smaller Little, they're not. They're not quite expansions. They might only re- introduce a handful of cards and uh, special little uh, things because uh, we, we're still ironing out the details of those. But they're going to be uh, these little special things for us to give back to the community. And the community is going to love it and eat it up. And I want this game to do amazing because you guys so far have been amazing. And I. This is. I am honored to be able to stream this first and play it first for Grievance together with you guys. This has been awesome. I can't wait to help in any way I can in the future. That's for sure. Well, the thank you. That means a lot to us. I mean, we're very we're very happy that people like it. I mean, even I know that uh, Azulster is uh, and the programming team they're out cranking out more. They've uh, since we started this stream, the game has gone through. 17 more itinerations uh, because yeah. that's how they we, we do a lot of our bug fixing in line with development mm-hmm. uh, and so I know Azolster and his team are very stoked about that I know that uh, the design team Eric 
VJ and Daniel, they're stoked. I know that uh, Richard, our composer, he's really happy getting his work out there. Our marketing team, Ashley and Renee, mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're here in the chat. Uh, they're doing well. And we, uh, our newest team member, we actually just uh, added him a, a few uh, days ago, or might have been a week ago. Uh, I'm starting to, you know, you know, you, you know you're in game development when you start organizing your mental dates by milestones of the game you're working on. <laughs> Uh, and not by dates, but Blake, uh, we recently added him. He's a very talented web developer, and he's going to be redesigning our website, which uh, should be going, uh, which he'll be, he'll have uh, on top of things very soon. Uh, and then, of course, David. I mean, David's our uh, our game director, and he's got he's been instrumental. He's been very critical to getting this moving forward. Mm -hmm. And we want to extend that sort of feeling to the community. So that's why there's going to be a feedback button in the game to get feedback for it. And if you guys want to help, which we, we need it to get this to you, is uh, when the Kickstarter goes live, uh, if you can, we'd we, we please support us. But if you can't, share us. Get the word out. Uh, when we go on Steam Greenlight, uh, vote for us there because uh, if we, the faster we get on Steam Greenlight, the faster we can get the multiplayer build without the workaround out to the PC and Mac users. Mm -hmm. And just because someone had asked it again, I know we went over it, but just to clarify, um, PvP will be available on the phone version at launch, but not on P Mac and PC till Steam Greenlight, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, we, we, we are looking into a workaround, which might be available. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do get to that workaround, uh, we will let everyone know how to do it. Awesome. Oh, that's so awesome. We're at the top of the hour now. Um, well, almost in five minutes. Um, does anybody else have any more questions? Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Talk about the Kickstarter more, or uh, one of the I can tell what we can tell you about this is that we've been uh, we did a lot of research uh, from for the Kickstarter. <laughs> we are have we have backer levels that are available for everyone. And the thing is, as I've said on many chat, on many uh, videos before, and I've mentioned to many people, is everyone gets something for backing Rido. Uh, it's and it's not just beta access. Everyone gets beta access who backs it once it goes live, and unless you sign up beforehand, then you'll get beta no matter what. Uh, but I believe at the lowest level of our backing. Mm -hmm. You're also getting a backer exclusive card. Ooh. It's either that or a backer exclusive cosmetic item. I do not remember off the top of my head which it is. Actually, uh, Mezzanote in chat is Ashley. She's on our marketing team. Ashley, can you bring up that document real quick? Is it the is it the card or the cosmetic item they get at the lowest level? Well, I think there's a first day backer card also. I'm all over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these are going to be really rare cards also. What do you do to get a Joey the Moose card out of the game? That's a good question, uh, Joey. We actually have uh, a one of our backer awards. I don't know off the top of my head what level it's at. Uh, I do know, full disclosure, it is on the higher end because of what it entails, but it is a meeting with the entire design team mm -hmm. and it is is an enti it is a meeting with the entire design team to design your own card ooh is there going to be like like boundaries to what they can and cannot do when it comes to having their own card designed or is that not decided yet uh, that is uh, going to be at the discretion of the design team. Right now, the uh, tentative plans for that reward are basically the person who pledges to the point where they want to design their own card. Mm -hmm. uh, they would come into a meeting with the design team. Uh, it would be over Skype or Google Hangouts. Uh, and then they would. we would also have to have them uh, – we would explain to them in the, in the Skype chat the toolbox that our designers use to build cards. And then the designers will work with that person to build their card with our toolbox. Awesome. And the reason we're doing it this way is that way not only can a person get their card the way they want, they would like to design it into the game, it doesn't break the game for everyone else. 
That's true. That's very true. But even that uh, you're offering this, holy cow. And uh, what we also have, uh, we're going to be offering, uh, I forget, also at one backer level, we're going to be offering to have people's likeness put in cards or <laughs> someone they would like to see in the card. Uh, we know that uh, Renee would like, uh, she brought it up the other day, she would like to see a David Hasselhoff inspired card. Don't hassle the Hoff. <laughs> no, I said we could only have one David Hasselhoff card. Oh, there can only be one David Hasselhoff <laughs> card. So apparently there's a limit to the amount of Hasselhoff in one game. You can only have one in a deck. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've got, like I said, we've structured our rewards uh, mm. because one of the things that we did in German Fu's stream, well, actually I did it. It mm. was kind of uh, me alone, not a, a, a company thing, is that I was... Uh, I was tuning into German Fu's stream to watch while I was working on uh, calculating out the backer awards. Mm -hmm. And so I figured since German uh, Fu had a few viewers, I would say, hey, well, what is everyone looking at backer award? And the number one thing that came out from uh, people on Twitch, and, and I know that the same question has been asked by other Apotheosis members in members of the Grievance uh, community's chat, what do you guys look for when you see backer awards? And we got a lot of great information. Mm -hmm. And this came from both Grievance and uh, it came from German Food Stream as well. Is uh, that people, at least from what we've we talked to, they would understand if some physical rewards are higher up on the backer thing if it gets the game. Because it's true, a lot of Kickstarters have failed because they gave away too much. Hmm. at low levels, and then they bankrupted themselves on rewards before they made their product. Hmm. And that's a disservice to the community. We're here hmm. for you guys. We're here for the gamers. And yeah, we want to we want to give you rewards because you're supporting us, and man, do we appreciate it. You're making us what we're doing possible. And you deserve everything we can give you. And there's always that rule of crowdfunding. People like stuff. <laughs> I know I like stuff. Everybody likes free stuff. Yeah. So, so we, we built the backer awards with that in mind. So you will get something, but the rewards are there to help us build. The, 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 the pledge levels are there to help us reach our goals so we can build Rido and mm -hmm. we can bring it to you guys so you guys can enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so wonderful. Ah. Oh. So wonderful. Is that um, is that all you had wanted to say for tonight? Then anything else? No, nope, that's it. No, nope. awesome. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, chat. Any more questions um, before we end for the night? Sorry if you guys wanted to see more gameplay. Um, this was mainly a first look, so I and I wanted to get Victor and some Apotheos members on here to talk while we did this first look, answer questions and everything. If you want to see specifically more gameplay, Germanfu will be playing more tonight, and Apotheosis, as they just said, will be in the chat. Uh, Renee, will it be you and Ashley in the chat? Uh, yeah, I think that we'll be on there as well talking. Awesome. And Victor, did you say you would be there? Uh, I have a meeting with I, f I, I know I have a meeting I forget with who to help get the get for result for the uh, games back end mm -hmm. uh, because it's a with a Chinese company so I might be dealing with them around that time. Oh okay. Uh, but if I if worst case scenario I'll be there in the chat. Okay, but yeah, then thanks for coming out tonight, guys. Remember to check out German Fu later tonight uh, if you want to see more gameplay. I'll be back in the near future with gameplay as well. Um, also, tomorrow, don't forget, 9 p.m. CST to check out our next interview with some more of the Apotheosis members. That's going to be so much fun. Can't wait. During the interview, I will also pull up um, the game so that each of the members can talk about it, what they like, some coming changes maybe anything they feel like. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Apotheosis. Renee, Victor, you, you're wonderful. Um, any closing remarks before I end here? Uh, uh, just that's to say thank you for everyone for watching. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, sh please uh, share the information about Rido and Apotheosis. Uh, our Kickstarter is going to be going live on the 29th, same with Steam Greenlight. So uh, please share that. If you are able to, please back us. We'd really, we really want to get this game out to you, and 
vote yes on Steam Greenlight. And as always, you guys rock. Gamers are why we're doing this. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful night, guys. Mwah. Toodles. See you tomorrow. Uh, good night from Potheos Inc. Grievance Gaming. Good night. <laughs>